Hello everyone, welcome back to the Penetration Testing Bootcamp. In this video, we're going to be talking about some essential InfoSec terminology. And the reason I'm covering this is because it's extremely important to understand uh, how we approach uh, pen testing from an InfoSec perspective. And again, we need to introduce a few basic terms that will, you know, set the premise for the rest of the series. Now, if you're already familiar with this, if you're an experienced pen tester, you can definitely skip through this. So let's get right to it. So the first thing we want to talk about is a threat, right? So what is a threat when it comes down to information security? So a threat is essentially a malicious actor whose objective is to breach, cause damage, steal, or exfiltrate data from a network or a system, right? So a threat is essentially an attacker or a hacker that wants to break into a system, right? Now, there's various ways you can classify a threat. So we usually know that threats will most likely target assets, right? Now, the assets they target will vary depending on what they're looking for. So let's understand what an asset, uh, an asset is, first of all. So an asset is... Uh, are going to be typically business or service critical systems on a company network that store data, provide services to clients or, an in, or are integral to the running of the company. So uh, assets don't really have to be on the system or the, the company network. They could be servers running uh, web applications, mail servers, stuff like that. They're essentially assets that, you know, the company needs and require for the functioning of their business and, uh, you know, additional or in addition to that, these are assets that are extremely useful because they store customer data and very valuable information. So these are obviously going to be very attractive to attackers. So assets can also be employees because, you know, employees do have or contain, uh, you know, they, they, they may know uh, privileged information. They could have access to uh, some important information Then you know, uh, uh, threats would usually start performing social engineering and uh, we can go through all of those uh, social engineering techniques. But for now, let's try and get an understanding here of what an asset is and how they're classified. So the reason assets are important in uh, in terms of InfoSec is because uh, during risk, uh, risk assessments and vulnerability assessments, assets need to be identified, classified and then adequately secured. So as a company, it's very important to understand uh, what your assets are so that you can adequately test them, perform analysis on them, and then, of course, secure them. This is very important. All right, so I've talked about risk briefly. Let's take a deeper dive into what risk is. So risk, uh, basically put, is the potential impact that a threat or vulnerability will or can have to an organization. Now, this sometimes will also go or will also, uh, you know, branch out into threats, but you're essentially looking at the impact that a particular threat or vulnerability will have on your on an organization and the, and its assets right so risk is typically going to be used to determine the probability uh, or or the potential of a vulnerability occurring and its consequent effect on the business and that could uh, can be classified as uh, you know the business impact analysis so you're looking at various things like uh, the downtime uh, the amount of money lost so you know there's also a financial aspect to that but we're not going to, going to be covering that um, so let's take a look at the actual, uh, you know, the bread and butter of pen testing and the terminology related to it very specifically. Those are vulnerabilities, exploits, payloads, and uh, zero day uh, zero day attacks or vulnerabilities. All right. So what is a vulnerability? A vulnerability is essentially a weakness or a flaw in a system or network that, when exploited, will compromise the integrity and the security of the system or network. Which, will, uh, which can or will lead to unauthorized access, which is something you don't want, right? So on, uh, vulnerabilities can be, uh, you know, can be seen as flaws in a system. And uh, of course, your threats or the attackers or the hackers uh, really look for vulnerabilities because they make everything so much easier. All right, so what's an exploit, right? So an exploit is the process, it's the actual process of breaking into a system or network through a set or a particular vulnerability, right? So you can use multiple exploits or you can use a single exploit depending on the uh, the severity of the vulnerability, right? So it, util it uh, exploits utilize payloads to perform specific malicious tasks. Now I'm talking strictly speaking uh, in the terms of a computer or a network here. I'm not really talking about how you look at it if you're talking about a perimeter security. Uh, so a payload, is going to be a chunk of the exploit code whose purpose is to perform specific tasks on the target system or the network. So this could be uh, destroying or exfiltrating data if it's an APT attack. 
uh, setting up backdoor access, etc., etc. So many of you might know what zero-day attacks or vulnerabilities are. So a zero-day vulnerability is essentially a vulnerability in a system or network that has not yet been patched by the developer. Now, you may be saying, well, what? why is uh, you know special, um, special uh, attention given to zero days? And the reason for that is quite self-evident. If a developer does not know about a particular vulnerability in their software, they haven't been, uh, you know, there hasn't been any disclosure, then this is typically what you'd call a popular zero day where, you know, it's uh, they usually circulated uh, around attackers, uh, circulated, uh, you know, within, uh, you know, various forums, underground forums, or they are usually found by, uh, by um, state sponsored, uh, well, not usually state sponsored uh, groups, but by groups that are very tightly knit together in that they don't disclose it to the public or they ju just don't re reveal it to the public. So again, uh, these vulnerabilities may go unpatched for years because again, there hasn't been disclosure of this, but in, in the event there is disclosure, they're also very, very dangerous because uh, until that is actually patched, these can be exploited by attackers or threats as we would call them. So. Now that we have an understanding of the terminology, let me try and explain this using, uh, you know, visual representation with my uh, with with my graphics tablet here. So, let me see if I can open up my whiteboard here. There we are. All right. So, uh, make this a bit larger. There we are. All right. So, uh, let's talk about a vulnerability. And uh, of course, we can we can understand this very briefly by using a simple analogy of you know that of a fence around a building. Right. So let's say you have a building right over here and I'll just use a circle and then you have your fence right over here that protects it. So this is your perimeter and this is going to be your fence right over here. So this is your fence there. All right, so uh, you have a building right over here and uh, we can just give it a bit of a, bit of a character here. So, you know, just a simple diagram and then uh, you have your fence blocking it and it's, you know, from all sides. So. Typically speaking, a threat is someone we would consider in this case a thief or someone who's trying to break into your perimeter, right? They're trying to get access to your house. So your house is your asset because it contains valuable information, uh, data, your belongings, etc. So this is your threat uh, right over here. Um, and uh, this is your security. So you have a fence right over here. Now a vulnerability is typically, as I said, a weakness or a flaw in a system uh, and in this case let's talk about a security system so this fence is set up to protect your asset or your house right now a vulnerability could be a flaw with the material that was used to create this fence or the fact that you know this is too short and uh, an attacker can easily scale this with a ladder if they if they so wish to uh, but let's take a look at a uh, the example of uh, the weakness within the actual building material of this fence so if this material is built with very thin metal, for example, then uh, an attacker would then use the exploit. Now, in this case, the exploit is a pair of pliers, right? So the vulnerability is the hole. So the hole is the, uh, it, well, not really the hole, but the weakness in the, uh, the material used to make the fence. And then the attacker uses the exploit, which is then going to be the, uh, the actual pliers to break into that fence and then get in and then, you know, he can do whatever he wants. Now, I want to, uh, I want to also uh, explain something that a lot of people get mistaken with, a lot of beginners, and that is the difference between a penetration test and a vulnerability assessment, right? So uh, it's quite self-evident with the words that they use, but a, an assessment is essentially the security auditor or the owner of this house, for example, going around his perimeter and trying to identify weaknesses with his security uh, or looking for any particular holes that an attacker could get into. So uh, if we just get rid of this hole and let's say there isn't any attack yet and uh, you know the, the, we have a, the owner of the house is now looking around the, the house and look, looking at the, at the fence for potential weaknesses, he may identify that this, hey, you know what, this fence here is made of very weak metal and as a result, uh, you know, if an attacker could actually break into it. So the, the, the main premise here is that he could, right? So they're identifying potential weaknesses. Now with a penetration test is uh, in, in this scenario again, is where the owner of the house, let's say this is the owner, would hire a pen tester and the pen tester would now uh, assume the role of the attacker and would actually get his pliers out and say, oh, you know what? That is actually a weakness. He'll then get a ladder and then he'll try and scale it up. So 
uh, he'll perform his test and he'll say, okay, uh, these are the actual results and these are the, 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 actual, uh, the actual vulnerabilities uh, that can lead to, you know, the breaching of your house. And then you'd give recommendations and then, you know, the, the owner can then follow up with the recommendations and he could put up a, a larger fence, an electric fence, uh, so that, you know, you can't actually make contact with the fence, so on and so forth. So hopefully that gives you an idea as to what we're dealing with here and how these, this both affects the owner or the organization, the attacker, and of course the pen tester and we'll be looking at that as we move along so uh, that's pretty much all i wanted to cover in this video again you can post your feedback in the comment section or uh, at our website at hackersploit.org and i'll be seeing you in the next video mm -hmm.